Hello everyone, this is Rajiv and once again I cordially welcome you back at Avriti and this time we are going to explore Strokes panel in Adobe Illustrator 2017 CC. Now I have been getting requests from all around uh, about uh, making a video uh, which focuses on Strokes panel in Illustrator. I am going to uh, cover each and every option which you see on the Strokes panel in full detail here and uh, just bear with me for another 10-12 minutes and you would see a difference in your knowledge uh, when it comes to dealing with strokes in Adobe Illustrator for sure that I guarantee. Well so let's start with the tutorial and uh, I have created these strokes which may not seem like strokes to you but they all are strokes. So there is a hidden stroke also which doesn't have any weight applied to it what that means basically is that when you create vector objects in illustrator it makes them on the basis of path so it's a possibility of having a path without having any fill or a stroke into it and since this is just a straight line even fill is out of the quotient you just need to have a stroke applied to it and unless we apply a stroke on it we cannot further manipulate any of the options given in the strokes panel so you have to have a weight applied to it, then only these options will come in life. So before we explore these options available in the strokes panel here, I want you to understand one simple thing in Illustrator or any vector program for that matter. Let's create two objects. So I'm going to create a straight line and I'm also going to create a circle. Now I have actually two objects but they do not have any fill or stroke applied to it that's why they are invisible. So first thing first I am going to select the line I have created and apply a stroke of 10 points. I want it thicker just for this example and then again I will also select the circle and apply the same stroke of 10 points. Now if I zoom into it and just click on it, notice that blue line appears in the middle of the stroke. So that simply means the default setting of the stroke on a path will allow it to align itself in the center of the stroke. So 5 point on the top and 5 points thickness at the bottom. That's how it goes when it is a path. And we do not have any functionality offered by the program to align the stroke on top or on the bottom of the path that's why these two options are not available to us but if we are dealing with a close shape I'll just zoom it out a little bit and then select it now the path is aligned exactly in the middle of the stroke and I have these two options which lets me align it to the inside of the path or outside of the path Now these three options are very handy sometimes so I just wanted you to uh, understand because Many times people keep on wondering why these two options are not available. Obviously because it's an open path and there is no such thing as inside or outside. Alright. So I'm going to delete these two and then now we are going to explore these options. So once again I'm going to draw a straight line and this time we need not to apply the stroke weight or, uh, on, the, on the path because Illustrator has a tendency of remembering the last settings applied. So since we have applied the last settings as black and weight of 10 points, we have the stroke in front of us. Now, we will explore the first set of uh, options available to us under the cap settings. So if you select it, I have three options in totality here. The very first one is the default setting which is known as butt cap. That means path is going to be of the same size as the stroke applied to. The second one is going to round off the corners, not the corners actually, the end points of the line segment and it will also extend it a little. Now this extension is, if you zoom it and let's bring the guideline also by hitting Control R, I'm gonna just pick a guideline here, pick a guideline here and pick a guideline here and here. So basically what it is doing, it is taking off the half of the stroke width and creating a semicircle at both the ends. So this is what it is doing. Why I want you to understand this concept here? Because it will be easier for you to understand and remember it what is happening. And if you come along any problem while working with your artworks, then you would understand what to do and how you can utilize the round cap function. 
Now, the third option here is in the cap setting is projecting cap, which simply, you know, adds up the half distance and creates a rectangle at the end of the line segment. Okay, so this distance is exactly the half of the stroke. If I reduce the thickness of this weight, you would understand. See, half of this is going to get projected. All right. So that was about cap settings. Once again, I'm gonna select the stroke, and this time, let's try out the corner options. So basically, these two options are available to us, right? But if I click on this one, it's not going to make any difference here at all. Or even if I click on this one, it's not going to make any difference because corners are supposed to be applicable on corners, obviously, and we do not have any corner points here. We just have two points, which is connecting a straight line. So let's create something. Okay, so I'm gonna make a path a zigzag path and now we have corners one two three and four corners so I'm gonna select it and then I'm going to try out the second option round join the very first option is mitre join we will talk about it in just in a while because mitre join is relevant to the limit mitre limit and we will talk about it but the next option here is round join if I click on that it's gonna round up all the joints okay see if I switch back even this joint is getting affected all right now the third option is bevel join it truncates the corner all right so this is mitre join round join and bevel join so for uh, round, round join and for uh, bevel join you do not have limit options available now I'll switch back to corner and we will see what this limit does so basically this limit is the angle not not li in literal sense it's a numerical representation of the angle in between uh, two adjacent lines which is creating a corner point so uh, it's not literally should be taken as 10 degrees it is rather a numerical representation of the angular uh, value here okay so uh, i'm gonna switch to sub selection tool and i'm going to uh, show you a problem and not a problem actually a phenomena which might result in a problem now notice as i move it closer to the adjacent side the angle is getting smaller and this projection of the point uh, the, the corner point is also elongating itself because that is only possible if you have a mitered join and what it is saying literally that it supports a limit of 10 and then there is a cross value that means the weight of the stroke into 10 times the limit will be supported if i go very close to it it's going to truncate it that means we have gone cross the limit of it and it's not possible to have a mitered join within 10 cross limit of the strokes weight I'll just show you once again so let's try out uh, try to find out the maximum we can go okay so I think this is the maximum we can go all right so if I go any lesser than this it's going to truncate the corner point and if I increase the limit to 40 then you will see that it again pops back and it is a global setting so that means that regardless of the artwork and how many corner points it has if it is created out of one single stroke or one single path okay so all the corner points are going to follow the same limit value all right okay now the third option is align stroke now if i select obviously these two options are not going to be available to us we have already seen it in case of a closed object so let's make a closed object all right and we can align the stroke inside or outside okay so i'm just gonna keep this here 
and let's get rid of the guidelines for temporarily removing the guidelines or hiding the guidelines you can hit the shortcut control plus semicolon on the keyboard control plus semicolon will also bring it back it's a very handy shortcut you should remember I'm gonna push it up a little and let's decrease the size of it I want more space okay fine uh, I'm gonna keep it here okay so uh, next thing is understanding dashed lines and how it works so I'm gonna create a line segment first a straight line and I'm going to switch on the dashed lines so if you click on it by default it gives you a dash of 12 point and a gap of 0 now this gap of 0 is actually let's if I convert it into uh, right now the setting is saying projecting gap that's why we do not have the gaps appearing as much as it should so if I switch back to the bird cap you will see that we have a dash of 12 points and by default it will again apply the gap of 12 points if you do not specify any gap settings the same setting is going to be replicated in all of them so 12 point dash and 12 point gap this is the dash and this is the gap so let's say that I want a gap of 10 points or let's say I want it uh, even lower than that I want exactly half of the dash value so we have a precise 12 point dash and 6 point gap now if this can be done with just two uh, values why do we have other empty spaces so uh, let's, let's try to play around with these basically we can have a variation and that variation is possible up to three uh, dashes and three gaps that's why we have six uh, uh, values which we can put in these boxes here so a 12 point gap and then six point uh, 12 point dash and then six point gap then I'll put uh, let's say that after 12 point dash 6 point gap I want another uh, 8 point dash and 4 point gap perfect so far so good exactly how we wanted it to be I'm just gonna center it on the screen and uh, now I want 6 point dash and a 3 point gap so this is exactly how we planned it to be and this is how you can utilize the dash settings for understanding these two settings we need to have a closed shape I'm just making a irregular shape here and just have a look at the corners okay just have a look at the corners now if this first option is selected it says preserves exact dash and gap lengths these are the kind of uh, artifacts we can have at the corners so let's switch to the to the next option we have and it almost you know solves out the problem and makes all the corners even at least visually they are even so uh, you can try out these two also if um, it suits your purpose and um, you know a lot of times just switching between these two options solves out a lot of bigger problems we are having with our artworks a few options here are still grayed out because we have not applied them yet um, now i'll just you know switch off the dashes for some time and let's uh, see how these arrowheads work so uh, i have two options one for the starting of the line segment and another one for the end of the line segment okay and then we have option of swapping start to end arrowheads because we can have different arrowheads for different ends and we can swap them also so very nice very handy option then we also have the option of scaling the arrowheads so let's say that the size of the arrowhead i don't like and i want it to be reduced by 50 percent so i can just simply type in 50 and then hit enter the same goes here i can also increase the size of it by 200 percent okay and reduce it as well i can change it anytime i want and so many different styles are available here so you know just play around with this till the time you find something interesting okay now next thing is a line and there is this option of link start to end their word scales that simply means that i can also link these two and i'm gonna change it to 100 percent and see both the ends are scaling proportionally because this link is selected now these two options extend arrow tape beyond end of the path let's click on that 
right now understand here uh, right now uh, notice uh, that the arrow heads are inside the line segment the end and the start both okay but this is basically pointing the arrow heads inwards the line segment and this is for pointing outwards the line segment okay i'm just going to get rid of the arrow heads and switch back to normal none and none all right and we are going to play up with the profiles now this is a very important thing and maybe i'll cover uh, more advanced uses of uh, width profiles because there is width tool also uh, in the toolbar and uh, by default there are few presets available to us which we can apply uh, by default it is selected as uniform if you click on the drop down you can see there are some basic profiles and what it does to the line segment is amazing because creating this same thing by using pen tool will take a lot of time and won't give you uh, such as uniform result uh, all right so you can try out different width profiles and it works amazing even with the line weights you can change the line weight and do not worry about this pixelation which is happening at the um, you know uh, edge of the shape created by the width profiles because it will be rendered as vector just for the display purpose it is a little uh, pixelated but if you keep on zooming in eventually you are going to get a very sharp line all right so uh, you can also try out different uh, width profiles okay and you can also reverse the profiles by clicking on these two options this is flip along okay it's flipping it along and since this is a vertically regular repeat so we do not have the tops on this option of flipping across flipping along uh, start to end and flipping across we do not have any ir ir let's try out this one and in this we have this option of flipping across because it's a irregular uh, vertical repeat we are having here so it's going to flip across and flip along won't make any difference here of course okay so uh, Yes, I have covered all of it, which is there in the strokes panel, every single option uh, which is available in Illustrator 2017 CC. And I hope uh, this video uh, makes a difference in your knowledge of uh, utilizing strokes uh, as far as Illustrator is considered. And there are other options which can be combined with the options available in stroke panel to generate very fruitful results in Illustrator. I'm going to cover all of those in future videos. So. Uh, please keep watching the videos I post and uh, like the video if you find it nice and uh, if you really find the content worthy please subscribe it really boosts up my morale and you know um, excites me for the thing I'm doing thank you so much for staying till the end of the video have a good day